say we have a, uh, a Boolean function and it involves three inputs and we'll call them um, J, K, and L. Everybody with me? Yes. And when you look at this, uh, what you're dealing with here is J, plus K, oops, and then where's that dot symbol? So uh, we started talking about this at the very end. Uh, yesterday. Uh, first of all, which kind of truth table am I going to use? Um, uh, and. And first. Which, which one do you think we should, uh, which truth table template do you think we should use? And first and. Wait, wait, wait. So how many different output possibilities are there if you have three inputs? What's two to the third? Oh, eight. Eight. So we're going to use a three input truth table template. Are there any questions about how we came up with that, that initial determination? I'm going to take a, a blank template. And I'm just going to grab this. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it right there. And what's the first thing I should do? What do you think is the first thing I should do with the headers of each of these? They, they, they both them, them as J, K, and L. Yes. Change them to J and K and L. And just because I hadn't filled all these in, does anybody know what we're going to put for the values initially for these? Anybody? Does, does everybody know what we're going to fill out for the initial values? I can do half zeros for J, uh -huh. and half one. Okay. What am I doing with K? K going to do two zeros, then two one, then two zero. And what about this one? It's going to do zero, then a one, then zero and one. Alternate. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of color coding here. And I'm going to say that um, that blue are the initial values. Okay. All right. So can we just run straight across this table with the operators the way they're stated like this? Can I just combine them? I mean, do I have do I have the same operator working on all three? I guess that would be the question. Um, I think you would have to go according to order of operations. Okay. 
Okay, so there isn't just one operator. We don't have an or in both places or an and in both places. That would be simple because if it were an and, we'd just fill in zeros and then put a one at the bottom. If it were ors, we'd put ones except for the, I mean, we'd put ones except for the, this value right here, which would be a zero. So we have order of operations. Which two do we have to consider doing first then? K and L. K and, K and L is correct because multiplication comes before addition. So I have to put a series of initial outputs, K and L, next to J and I can OR those. So one thing I could do is insert, I'm gonna right click and insert to the left. And I'm gonna say this is the result of K and L. So let's and K and L values and fill out this column together, okay? What do we have for an answer here? Zero. Okay. And what do we have here? Zero. And what about here? Zero. And what about here? One. And what about here? Zero. What about here? Zero. What about here? Zero. And? One. One. Okay, now I'm going to make these a little different. So uh, what I could do is make this like, I don't know, green and make these all green. Okay, and then this result would be green, but now I'm going to or the output of K and L with J. So now I can and, no, I'm sorry, I can or, see so what I just did there? I was thinking the plus sign and I said I can and. No, I'm oring J with the output of K and L. So I can put my output here. I can make this blue, right? I don't know if that's helping or not. I don't know if the color coding is helping. So let's or these. What do I get for an answer here? Zero. Zero for, 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 for the first one. Okay, that's true. Zero again for, for for the one for the one second blank space. Yeah. Zero. Zero for the third. One. 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 Yeah. So zero, zero, one, 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 one. I have a question for you. Would it be easier to write out the initial values for the true cases, or would it be less work to write out the values for the false cases? If I had to do the canonical expression, it would be less work to write the false. I mean, we could write out five expressions and we could say, okay, the initial value of J is zero and then K is one and L is one. So that's a J tick K L 
and then J, K tick, L tick, and then J, K tick, L. You see what I'm doing here? Every time there's a zero, I'm using a tick with it. I could do five series of expressions all the way down the line with the original input values. Or I can do the reverse. In this case, I'm gonna do the reverse because it's easier. So I'm gonna state the reverse canonical and I'm gonna write out the reverse canonical. So J, K, and L, that's J tick, K tick, L tick. J tick, K tick, L, and J tick, K, L tick. So what am I saying? I'm just gonna copy and paste to make this easy. That should be a lowercase j. So let's see, I have j, k, and l, original values are zero and zero and zero. So I'm gonna put a, I'll just, I'll just do this. Or what's the next possible? Notice what I did, I put a plus sign and I stated the word or. Does everybody see that? Zero, zero, and one. So I have a J tick, K tick, L, or what's the third case? The third case is J tick, K, L tick. So I'm gonna use the reverse canonical because it's easier. Are there any questions about this example and how you would use a truth table to come up with the outputs that represent the function of the software or hardware that does this? And you're probably saying, why does this matter? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. I wanna give you some perspective. So, I need to know if you read this study guide, whether it makes sense or not. So, I'm hoping that when you read the study guide uh, that's out there, that what I've given you is sensible. Has anyone gone to a casino? Has anyone been inside a casino? No. 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 Does anyone know what a slot machine is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Have you heard the statement, the house always wins? Most definitely. Oh, yeah. So you have a slot machine. And here's the sick part. Did you know that casinos only make money if they hook people into believing they're going to win a lot of money? So they're kind of like drug pushers. They're going to give you a high by letting you win quickly and you win big. And you're like, oh, man, I only brought 100 bucks with me. I should have brought 1,000. The next payday, I bring the whole 1,000, right? So they, what I'm saying is, is that there's this thing called beginner's luck, and it's not really luck, it's rigged. What happens is that <laughs> a, lot of the, a lot of the games that are structured in a casino favor beginners so that they, they have early success, and they think, you know what, I'm good at gambling. 
nobody's going to keep doing what they suck at, right? I mean, would you keep coming and keep, I mean, if you went into a casino and you lost your shirt every time you went in, I'm just speaking plainly here. How many times would you have to lose your shirt before you said, you know what, gambling and I just don't mix, right? But have you ever wondered, how do people get hooked in the first place, right? Well, let's take the lowly slot machine. It's the one-armed bandit. You pull the lever, that's the arm of the machine, and then there's a dial and there's a series of combinations that play out. And what I'm telling you is that you can rig with simple logic gates a scenario where, I think it's in the addendum, uh, I cover some things in the addendum. Oh no, where the heck? All right, so the addendum that I'm gonna post out there uh, explains more about canonical representations and it gives you a verbal explanation of what we've been covering in class. That's useful. Um, I'm gonna have to find the detail that I have on the, um, the slot machine. Basically, if you know how to make something go true and you change one or two inputs and the way they're combined, uh, by combining them a little differently, it'll hit more often. In other words, the answer on the face of the slot machine, two out of eight times, it'll ring true. Oh, you're a winner, two out of eight times. But then after somebody goes so often, right? The, le the electronics inside there, the software or the hardware, either way, can be restructured so that it's, it's not true most of the time. It takes 64 times of, it takes 64 pulls for one of them to work. That's uh, two to the sixth, I think. So you have like six pairs of inputs. So the longer you keep doing it, the worse and worse it gets, right? The harder and harder it is to hit or to get true. So if we're equating a true output with a payout on a slot machine, you can combine these, uh, these components so that basically you can control how this thing works. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that here you have two ands and they're stitched together in series and that creates a three input and if you stitch a, a third one, now you have four inputs, and you know what happens with a four input and. Two to the fourth is 16 possible outcomes, only one in 16 is true, right? If I take the and, the ors, and the nots, and I feed the outputs into one of the inputs, I can piece these together like Legos. Does everybody know what Legos are? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I can take this knot and I can put it in front of the B input of this OR. So I can have a knot B with this OR. And now the OR behaves differently. So I have a two input OR with a knot going in. Well, how does that behave? What does that do as an electronic component? And why would you care? Well, they determined that all of these Lego parts fit together to make up things like random access memory and solid state hard drives and CPUs. Believe it or not, when you start piecing all these things together, you get a very predictable outcome so that you know how the computations are rendered. Um, let's take an even simpler example. Oh, all right. So this is a point I'm making in the study guide. Here's where the knot is applied to the output of this example. So first you do all of this, and then you get output from all of this, and then the output is knotted. In a lot of cases, the knot applies to a single input or two or more inputs and, and not to the whole thing. So not is like a wild card. I want you to 
think of the not operator or the not Boolean function as sort of like a, a wild card. And here's what I mean by wild card. You can get a very different but similar result. So let's take a much simpler case, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a, a, a new um, a new challenge and uh, give me a second. Everybody can still see, right? Can everybody still see? Yeah. Or are, you, are you still with? Yeah, me? we can see. Okay. So let's say we have a function, a Boolean function, or a pair of operators, right? Uh, and let's let's do um, f now. Got to use some. We got to use something really exotic here. I want to insert a symbol because I want this to look like really freaky. So the challenge is I want you to go home and uh, I want you to have this look on your face and I want you to play the sympathy card with your family, right? And so uh, let's say that uh, this is a science lab course, all right? You with me? And let's say that we have this computing function in a piece of lab equipment. And that's the Greek symbol for alpha and the Greek symbol for beta. Are you with me? In English, that's A and B. Okay? Now I could say input A and input B. I could do this instead. But I want it to look funky. Uh, because sometimes you get these fancy technical documents and people are trying to scare folks. Ooh, this is really complicated. Ooh, this is really hard. Ooh, this is really crazy. No, it isn't. That's the English equivalent of A and B. That's all that is. It's just using, they're just using Greek letters, that's all. Okay, so let's say that we or these. Are you with me? So what mathematical symbol am I going to put down if we're oring? All we're doing is oring A and B. Hello? The plus symbol. Thank you. Plus symbol. So what size table am I going to use? Oh, oh, the one, oh, the, oh, oh, the one, the one, two, the two one, the one, the one, two to a second. Two, two to is a second. correct. Thank you. I'm going to take this, right? And uh, I'm going to go into here. And I'm going to go ahead and substitute my values, right? And uh, I want you to show this to people in your family. You want to say, oh, I'm having to calculate the logical output for alpha and beta inputs. And they're going to go, ooh, that sounds complicated. Can I get you something to drink? How about a nice piece of cake? So I used to play this up with my mother all the time, right? I would, I would play up the sympathy factor, right? Well, the simple truth is, and I have a quick question for you. Um, everybody knows that not is the flip or the reverse, right? Could we say that or is the flip or reverse of and? Could we say that or, the outputs for or, not or, would be the same as and, right? 
So, so let's just stick with let's just stick with or first, okay? So, so let's say I'm I have or here. Um, I'm going to put what zero zero. This is pretty quick, right? One one, and then zero one zero one. Would somebody volunteer to tell me what goes here, real quick? Um, uh, zero one one one. Okay. So my question is, so I said, Knots are wild cards, right? You with me? Everybody with me? Yes. All right, so yeah. let's take the same idea. And um, let's change it. Okay. So to answer that question, here's what I have to do. I want to look at what this outcome is. Uh, so I'm going to or I'm going to and this now. So what's my output now? Zero 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 one. Do you think that or, if we just not or, we'll get the same result as and? No. No, we don't. And how do we know that? Well, if I not the output of the or, I turn, I flip this, what is it now? One, one zero, 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 zero. And what's this? Zero, and zero, this and zero. Okay, is that the re, is that what we have here? No. I have three zeros and a one, but are they the same three zeros and a one? Oh, yes, yes. It, no. But, but it does fit. Actually, they would appear to be the same, but when the input is false and false, then I have a one. Down here, if the input is false and false, I have a false. When the input is zero and one here, I have a zero. When the input is zero and one here I have a zero but if I follow down the column when the input is one and one I have a false here when the input is one and one I have a I have a one here so I have a zero here and I have a one here so I have three zeros and a one if I not the or right so how does that look remember I said you could do this by using bold right you could say, okay, now I'm going to not the output. I have three zeros and I have a one. I have three zeros and I have a one, but are they the same? Is the, is the functional input the same? And 
the answer is no. So why why would you okay? So why would we use these link? Well, let, let's get to the chase. If these are like Legos, why would we want to differentiate between a case that's partially true and not? Okay. All right. So let's take driving for example. Everybody's everybody drives, right? Pretty much everybody has a driver's license. Pretty much. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, Yeah, I don't want that line there. It's not a mistake. All right. So let's go in on the view. Question. When you put the metal tab in the metal buckle for your seat belt, when metal connects with metal, could that turn on a circuit? Could that, could that let electricity flow when you put the metal tab of your seat belt into the metal buckle of your seat belt? Could, could you envision a case where something is like connected so there's current flowing? I want yes. you to imagine that there are two wires yeah. that go into the tab of your seatbelt, and there's two wires that go into the the buckle of your seatbelt, right? And when you connect the two, the circuit is closed, so a value turns on. That's one way you find out whether or not somebody has their seatbelt on in a car. It's actually a little piece of digital logic in there. There's a there's a little there's a little circuit there's a component in there it's digital and if you don't have your seat belt connected the circuit is open and it's off the condition is false so what's the result on the dashboard no light or a warning light that says hey your seat belt isn't on a warning light a warning light. Okay, what happens if somebody is not occupying the passenger seat next to you? Are you with me? When you sit in the seat, the weight of your body pushes down on the seat of the car, and there's a little metal contact in the seat of your car, and over a certain weight, the metal touches metal. The circuit is closed. The car knows somebody's occupying the passenger seat. Have you ever wondered, how does a car know, hey, the seat belt isn't fastened? And how is it different when nobody's in the passenger seat in the front? It's because of this logic. You're sitting in the front seat, you have a passenger in the front seat. Now there's weight. Now it presses down on the cushion. Now there's a metal contact that closes. Oh, hey, we have somebody occupying the seat. Seat occupied, true. Seat belt connected, false. Alarm, true. So what am I saying? These logical conditions help automate a lot of indicators and stuff that we take for granted every day. Stuff in thermostats, things in uh, electronic and, and uh, digital components everywhere. So, so what am I saying? I'm saying that if you understand how this stuff works, you can design the logic gates and the digital circuits to automate everything in our physical world. Think about it. Should anyone worry about a roller coaster uh, seat that's empty? In terms of safety, if you're at a theme park, should we worry about empty roller coaster seats? No. No, we wouldn't. Would we want to worry about seats that are occupied when somebody hasn't got their harness on? Yes, absolutely. Would we want to control the number of trues we get in a casino so we can hook people into thinking, oh, they're good at gambling and they come back with more money next time? Yeah. 
Yeah, we would, because we want to be rich. You know, there was a guy named P.T. Barnum, and he said, there's a sucker born every minute. <laughs> Barnum and Bailey Circus. One of the guys that started the Barnum and Bailey Circus, a world famous circus that traveled everywhere. It's probably been to the Virgin Islands. The guy P.T. Barnum was one of the leads for that company that started that big thing. And for 50 years, families would gather during the county fairs and the circus would come to town. For you, it's a carnival. So it's a kind of a different, different, uh, it's a different cultural phenomenon, right? But the simple truth is, everybody knows that there are absolutes, ones and zeros. And the question is whether or not you know how to control the inputs and the outputs to your advantage. The value of understanding how this stuff works is being able to build your own devices and enforce safety. What happens if somebody walks through a store and they don't have a mask? Could you have facial recognition that shows mask on? False. What would you want the output to trigger? You would want that output to be true and you would want it to trigger something, an alarm, right? A notification, something. I hope I'm making sense. I hope, I hope that uh, what we've shared here makes sense. And I want you to understand how things may appear to be opposites, but they're not. The not operator really is a wild card. If you apply the not, you get a totally different result. So you could have a case where something is false, something else is false, and what you end up with is a true. Like, how about this? Um, gee, the seatbelt is false. It's not fastened. The door is open. It's true that you should not be able to put the car in park. I mean, you should not be able to put the car in drive. Have you ever wondered that if the door is open, have you ever wondered how a car is smart enough to know that if your door is open and your seatbelt is not fastened, you can't even put that sucker in park, right? The transmission gear is park true. You can't put it in drive, right? So I'm just saying sometimes this logic is really good. It's, a, it's, a, it, it's what keeps us safe. You can also have logic that's wrong and it uh, creates huge problems. There's a great um, video clip on YouTube of the Ariane 5 rocket, I think. It's part of the European Union, the, e the EU. Uh, they were competing with America in the space race and put satellites up and somebody made a single mistake on a single statement in a single program and 100 feet off the launch pad, the whole rocket, $300 million rocket blew up. Thankfully, nobody was in the rocket. It was just equipment that they were launching, just satellites. So it was a bad day, but at least nobody lost their lives. I'm pretty sure that it affected people's lives pretty profoundly. When you lose $300 million, somebody's bound to get fired. A lot of people are bound to get fired. So understanding how the logic flips in and out is a is actually a very useful skill. Um, did did I scare anybody by using Greek symbols? No. I hope, I hope not. 